Hi everyone, welcome to Tony Fox Tarot. Thanks for joining me today and great to have you with me. So today we're looking at whether to stay or whether to go and we'll break that question down by having a look and seeing how you feel about this other person. What are your thoughts and feelings? What's this other person think and feel about you? And what are the issues that are outstanding between the two of you in terms of this particular connection? Where's it all going as a timeline? So an outcome as to a natural consequence of where things are at this point in time. And most importantly, answering your question as to whether you should stay or whether you should go. So lots to get into. And before we get started, if you want to go down below and hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon that'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. Please like and share this video where you can. And if you are interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Now, before you on the screen, we've got three different cards to choose from, and the idea is to choose a card that resonates with you really clearly. Once you've made that choice, that will be your reading. It's perfectly fine to choose more than one card if it comes to really strongly for you today. Just remember, this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave behind anything that doesn't. Now, we've got card one, card two, and card three. So taking a moment to be with the cards, drawing in a nice deep breath, and as you release the breath, Listening to your intuition, your inner voice, and the energy of the cards, which of these comes through for you the strongest? Is it card one, card two, or is it card three? So down below, there are three different timestamps representing each of these different cards. If you'd like to go to the one that you've chosen, I'll see you in a moment. Hi everyone, welcome to card number one, this is your reading. Today we're looking at whether you should stay or whether you should go. So let's jump on in and have a look and see what's going on with this particular reading. Now I'm going to start up here with the Wheel of Fortune and the Three of Cups. This is looking into the past with this other person. I felt this is somebody who's really great fun to be around. Likes a laugh, a bit of a joker perhaps. Something very light touch about them and social at the same time. Um... I feel like this is a popular person who just has a very easygoing narrative. Like, nothing's too heavy, nothing's too serious, always a bit of a laugh. I, I felt that this is somebody who lands on their feet, that they are always in the right place at the right time. Right set of circumstances are prevailing around them in a way where they don't really, they don't really think too much about the future. You know, somebody who's very much in the moment of today. You know, so not a lot of forward planning in terms of next month, the next six months, maybe the next year, or, or certainly not anything beyond that. Um, I, I, I did feel there was something quite obviously lighthearted, but this person just goes with the flow. You know, I, I don't I don't feel that this person is risk averse in any way, shape or form. You can see that with the Wheel of Fortune. You know, they, they kind of just ride this wave of intuitive energy that just lands them with with a kind of fateful outcome and they always land the right side up so there's a confidence about working like that because they're, they're, they're very well versed in going with that flow um and as a consequence i kind of feel like they're always attracting experiences that are very positive so they put a lot of good stuff into life and they get a lot of good stuff coming back and there's always something to celebrate on that level um down here with Judgment and the Two of Pentacles, I felt this was a good place to start for yourself, looking into the past once again. I feel, by nature, you're very different people, and I think that you know that. I think that you are much more of a tomorrow person. You're always thinking about things in advance in a way where you like to forward plan. Um, my, my sense here is that you've seen this enormous potential with this person in terms of coming together as, 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 as a couple or as a force of two. I think you've given a lot of consideration. You've really weighed things up here in terms of the potential at a core, at a core level. I want to, say, want to say that that seems to be really important. I think when I say that, it's not just about the, the lighthearted, very romanticized way that this person kind of seems to operate. I think you've seen the potential to combine resources. Um, and, and, and so from an opportunistic point of view, you've looked at the sort of material and maybe the financial and practical outcomes that you can achieve together as far as a, a couple is concerned. 
Um, at the same time, you know, judgment, there's a real weight to that card. <clears throat> it really does look at things very seriously in terms of really getting down to the bone. I think that you've actually really sort of thought about what it means to be in a relationship with somebody who is so carefree. Given your nature, I think you're a much more serious person by nature. And I think you've really looked at that and you've kind of toyed with it and kind of gone over it in a way we've gotten to grips with the fact that you think that this can really work. I think you've seen a diamond in the rough here. Um, and that you're kind of all over that in a way where you kind of, yeah, this is amazing. This could be something really amazing coming together and, 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 and living our best lives together in a way where we have um, so, some amazing opportunities together. Over here to the Fool and the Six of Wands. I, I, this is more about now and where you're at at this point in time. I think you're very split. I mean, obviously you're asking the question, should I stay or should I go? I think a part of you has come to a point where you've realized <clears throat> that perhaps if you take on the full weight of the relationship in terms of all the practicalities, you know, trying to underpin everything in a, in a, in a responsible fashion that's about forward planning, that that might be too much. And maybe that's too much for you because it's taking on a lot. You're taking on the weight of two people in a way where the other person doesn't really buy into looking at life like that. And I, and I think you're trying to take a leaf out of this person's book in a way where you just want to go with the flow. You know, taking an instinctive approach that avoids sole responsibility to do any one thing, following a more of it, more instinctive path that... Um, eliminates this idea of risk you know just, just again just trying to go with the flow being like more more like this other person but the other side of you is sort of edging towards this idea of success in a way that is based more on on who you are fundamentally as a person and that requires forward planning to get successful outcomes you need to get on top of things in a way where you not control it but perhaps manage things effectively in a way that actually gives you sure outcomes this person's approach is <clears throat> is not it's, it's not something you can replicate. Whereas I think your approach is much more by the book in a way that is, um, yeah, you can replicate it, you know, because you have a sure approach approach that's more project orientated or at least more more responsible in a way where you put things into order and make sure that there is some kind of validity in terms of your in, in terms of the way that you work yeah you 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 have a structure you have a format that format that gets you really good outcomes and, and i think you're at this point in time really split as to whether you can go down the path with this person and work more like them or whether you really need to be more like yourself and kind of face a truth here that says perhaps this person can't work like me if we come up here to the sun and the four of wands i felt this other person, if you look where they're at right now, they don't see any problems whatsoever. All they can see is everything being a, half, a glass half full. They've got such a positive mentality. They never look at anything through a lens of negativity or through a critical lens that actually lends towards the idea that things can go wrong. You know, they're kind of always very, very positive, very upbeat. Um you know, through their eyes at this point in time, they're kind of looking at everything as like, you know, everything's like a sense of cohesion and togetherness. You know, they feel really happy with you. I feel that this person's fully on board with you in a way where they want to be in a relationship. I don't think there's any question around that. As far as they're concerned, the, the, the evidence is is that everything is well. You can see that here with the four of pentacles, sorry, the four of wands. You know, we're working really well, well together. There's fruitful outcomes by, 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 by working alongside or in tandem with each other. You know, we've got everything that we need to validate our relationship at this point in time. And, and, and I'm really happy. I can see that you're really happy. We've got evidence that everything is working in a way that underpins the relationship very positively. I, I would have said for some of you, you can see here with the sun that this person might even be thinking about the idea of having kids, you know, and this is sort of like a slight housing connection to the four of wands so maybe settling down and getting a house and living your best life together that that might be the case for some people if it's not about kids it's definitely about this idea of settling down and living your your, your best life together i felt this person had no double take or second guessing going on here with the relationship that they're very positive and, and I, I, can, I can see that that is actually a really infect, infectious vibration 
and that's kind of coaxed you into a way of thinking that sort of says, look, you know, like maybe I just need to kind of, you know, just kind of go with the flow like this person. It always seems to, to work for them. And there's something very romantic about this person. You know, there's, there, there is a, a kind of almost, you know, very risk, risk um, taking, free falling, happy go lucky, let's just kind of roll with the punches, see where it takes us, life can be amazing, let's just let, live our best lives together. I can, I can see how that would actually be with this person. Um, coming over here to the High Priestess and the Seven of Pentacles. So what's the outcome here in terms of where it's all going? I felt with this person, looking into the future in terms of the next steps, there's an inability to plan beyond next week, maybe next month, or maybe even the next six months. Certainly nothing beyond that. I kind of feel where the downfall is for this person, that they're unable to commit to anything that's like a long-term goal that requires serious planning. Whether that's about your future in terms of the relationship or more practical aspects in terms of what underpins the relationship with money and security and financial aims or any other kind of big goal that you're actually putting together in terms of trying to really clarify the future so that you've got an anchor point that actually allows you to map towards longer term objectives. I kind of feel this person is that they have an inability to, 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 to make that commitment because they're always so vague about what's going on in the future for them. They're always in the moment, kind of, you know, just taking things as they come. So it's not that they can't plan in some ways, but on the other hand, it's, it's, it's their inability to really get their head around the detail of what it means to be responsible and to take on those responsibilities in a way that methodically get you to, 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 to the end point. That person doesn't work like that. So I feel long-term mapping is very much um, thwarted by the very much in the, in the moment approach to life. And this is where the today person mentality really comes into play. And I kind of feel it gets in the way. And I want to say, what I want to say here is if we come down here to the tower and the king of wands, I think it does get in the way for you because you are somebody who is always taking on the greater responsibility. It always lays upon your shoulders. And maybe it's not like that in every relationship, but it's certainly like that in this particular relationship. I felt that you won't be able to escape that idea of the bigger picture. And that as a consequence of this person not being able to take the slack in terms of managing things effectively to outcomes that actually give you really confident outcomes as far as goals are concerned, whether it's with a relationship or anything else, I felt that this is where you would feel an innate or an instinctual responsibility to step in and make it good. You know what I'm saying? You know, the King of Wands is a card that works very hard to achieve ob objectives. You know, like it's a, it's a project orientated card. It takes on all of the work. It loves a challenge and it's coupled with the tower. And the tower is a card that is on really shaky ground. And no matter what is going on, you're going to jump in to every situation with this person and try and manage anything and everything um, in a way that leads it to fruitful outcomes. So, so you're always going to feel a need to forward plan responsibly and to mitigate risk and avoid pitfalls um, by, by doing things in a way that is more akin to how your real nature is, which is to, to, to really get down into the bones of things and to look at things that are much, from a much more structural point of view. And I think this is where the test is, is the test is, is, is that this person can't get their head around that kind of thinking because it's just not what they're like. Whereas you can get your head around this person's more risk orientated approach and, and for me, this is where there's a bit, bit of a problem because I, I, I felt that you would always be taking on the weight of, of, of two sets of responsibilities where it really counts when it, when it comes down to, 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 to the structure of the relationship, that you can't be something that you're not, is what I'm trying to say. You're, 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 you're not that free-flowing romantic figure that just kind of rolls with the punches and and hopes that everything will be amazing because at the end of the day it usually is you're you're fundamentally a very different person for me this is this this doesn't have a successful outcome in terms of a future based on the fact that the two of you are completely different people 
this is a tomorrow person. Sorry, you're a tomorrow person and this person is a today person. And the way that you both work at a core level does not bring you together in a way where there is a sense of cohesion. There will be friction ultimately within this relationship that leads to you feeling that you actually have to pick up the pieces and actually make it all good. And this person will just keep on going with the flow in a way where it doesn't really affect them. So you will lose a lot of energy to this. So it's a no for me. Look, I hope this reading has made some sense. And if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe. Tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is you can access, access my services as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much and take care. Hi everyone, welcome to card number two. This is your reading and we are looking at whether to stay or whether to go today. So let's jump on in and have a look and see what's going on here. I want to start up here with death and the Ace of Pentacles. and I'm looking historically to this other person and I felt <clears throat> that they had given up on the relationship with you, that they had ended it. It's a sense that they wanted to take things into their own hands in a way where they empowered themselves to have a new beginning. I, I felt that this person wanted to wipe the slate clean and to renew their opportunities in a way where they changed everything, you know, from the ground up. And I felt that this was a very warts and all process in terms of them being very honest with you about everything that wasn't working between the both of you. I, there's an honesty there that that, that, that is, is valid, but at the same time, I, I kind of felt that that was almost brutal. Maybe they've said um, too much. Maybe they've just given you too much information. Maybe they just didn't need to be as honest as they were. Maybe they could have softened the blow in a way that was more sensitive to how it is that you might take things or how you felt about what was going on. I, I kind of felt that this was very much all about the other person in a way where it didn't really matter what you had to say about the situation. Um, they kind of made it their mind up anyway. You know, it was time to move on in a way that um, they just wanted to, to, to get out at all costs. So I, I felt that this was a very confronting experience for you. I felt that it was a very hard process for this person to, to, to finally get to a point where th that they found the honesty, that they found the courage to, 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 to do what they had to do for themselves. There's no doubt about that. Um, they wanted out. They wanted to make a new start. I mean, I, I think that's the crux of it. But, but at the same time, it came at a cost to you in a way where you had no control over the situation. I did feel that this breakup was amicable in a way where, despite the fact that this person moved on, that, you know, the practicalities of the relationship, maybe the money or the finances and, and, and sort of material aspects of what you had woven together were agreed upon in a way where you could, um, you know, t take something out of, of, of the situation and kind of make a start for yourself. I, I did feel that this was a heavily involved relationship. I, I, I wondered whether that meant for some of you that this was like a long term situation where you were married or you were in a de facto situation where, you know, you've been living with each other for a long time. Or, or if it wasn't either one of those things, I kind of just felt that this was a very intensive, very deep relationship that had interwoven itself in a way where there was a lot to lose one way or the other. This This is not a flippant thing, you know, like it's, it's, it's heavy. I kind of feel that there's a lot to sort out in terms of, you know, try, trying to figure out how to move on. You know, like coming down here to the Hermit and the Ten of Swords, I felt this was a place to start with you historically in reflection of what we've just talked about here. I think there's been like this very long history of ups and downs for you outside of this relationship with other people. Um... I, I, I just I, I felt that when this happened with this person that it just it kind of brought or, or, or triggered maybe a, a lot of difficulties that you've had with other people. Um, a sense of feeling let down, a sense of being betrayed, a, a, a deep sense of loss and sorrow in a way where you feel isolated, alone. 
Um, I, I get that you've, I, I really feel that you've been, you know, quite gutted in terms of the process of what's happened here. There's a lot of wreckage to sift through in, in terms of putting the pieces back together for you. And so, so, so trying to get a perspective as to, as to moving forward beyond this relationship. And I'm looking into the past here. I think it's taken an enormous amount of, of, of energy. There's a lot of self-reflective process going on here with these two cards. The Hermit is very deep in terms of its internalization. And I, and, and I felt that you've had to really um, struggle through uh, an understanding as to, to figure out maybe where you went wrong or where the relationship went wrong. And then it went deeper, you know, like it kind of looked outside of the relationship and going more into your history. It really, I kind of really felt like you'd been on a journey here that's sort of taking you inwardly into a very deeply reflective um, place that's really tried to sort of figure yourself out. So like, why am I attracting these experiences? Why have I had an accumulation of such negative relationships that over time have compounded into, you know, like a, like a, I guess like a like a like a dead end. To, to, I, I'm never really getting close to where I really want to be in terms of feeling the intimacy and and, and shared. I, I guess goals or aspirations that I really want to have with somebody else. Um, but I do feel like you know the combination of this person and, and, and so their experience and your experience, I do feel that either way, within this relationship, there had been an accumulation of experiences that had been ultimately very negative and that it had come to the end of the road. And I, I think actually through the pro this process, you have accepted that it couldn't go on, um, that it had reached the end of the road. And I felt also that maybe you'd also given up, you know, that there was nothing else left for you to give in this relationship. Um... Yeah. Coming over here to the Emperor and the Seven of Wands, this is more of the, the here and now of where this person's at. And I felt a really different energy coming through. I feel that there's a strong effort to regain your, like, like, like your attention. I, I felt like this person was asserting themselves in a way where they were making a move to get back together with you. I felt that they really wanted to heal like a rift or that they were coming in at different angles in a way where they were trying to knit something together with you that actually was based on resolving the situation that had happened previously to this. You know, yeah, it, it, most definitely. I, I kind of feel this is a very cavalier energy. Very, You can see that with the Emperor. Very, very strong aspirational energy that really wants to achieve success in terms of uh it's kind of a, almost like a warrior-like spirit of, of of you know making their mind up to, to 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 reach a summit that actually achieves a goal most most definitely um I, I felt this person was making their move and asserting a very strong case for getting back together in some way and trying to get your attention very firm in their conviction in terms of trying to win you back over. I felt coming back over here to death and the Ace of Pentacles, I felt although this person had fully let go of you at an intimate level in terms of the relationship, I, I did also felt that they, 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 were, they had kind of left the door open to keep in contact in a way that was very constructive. So they kind of let go, but not. It's not a case of wanting their cake and, and eating it. It's more of a kind of case of just like, you know, like I can't do this anymore. I want to, I want to move on, but at the same time, I still want to be invested in your work. I don't feel this person has ever really let you go. Coming down here to the magician and the eight of pentacles, I felt this was a good place to sort of, you know, reflect on where you're at at this point in time. I felt like you had moved on. You know, you put distance between yourself and this relationship in the past. And that you've actually focused on the future in a way where you've actually made some very practical steps to take yourself forward in an empowered way. You can see that here with the magician, striking things into action, stepping into your own power, regaining your, your I guess, your, your posture in a way that um, is grounded, dignified, assertive. Um, it's, it's very much about asserting your independence and your ideas around what that means to be your own person. I kind, of, I kind of felt that you'd moved on from this situation. You'd reached the end of the road, historically speaking, and you're actually in a really good place for yourself as far as just feeling like you were facing forward and letting go of the past. 
maybe focusing on, you know, like, like a series of goals or objectives um, that, that are about sort of, you know, pinpointing the future and, and kind of ticking them off in a very constructive way. I, I just, I kind of felt in terms of a timeline, you were really super focused on moving forward and achieving lots of different things. I felt like you're in a really good place, actually. Um, this is very empowered through action understanding what the opportunities are in front of you in a way where you're you're just super focused you don't have any energy sort of um being drained away from you in a way that distracts you a very 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 a very strong position of um of, of focus on the future and, and 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 of time moving on it kind of, i kind of feel like time has moved on for you in a way where you put some distance between what's happened in the past because it was very painful so i, I kind of feel a strength here that is, is just resolved to cracking on with it. But at the same time, there is this consideration to the idea about what this person is actually conveying to you in terms of a, of a relationship potential. And I also feel that you see an opportunity here and you're, you're, you're trying to understand whether you should give this a go or not. Should I stay or should I go, really? Because you're in a really good place. Things are, are on a roll. They've gathered momentum in a way where if you just carry on with that particular point of view or, or, or trajectory, you know, you don't stand to lose anything on that level. But at the same time, the considera consideration of a relationship is also really important because it does offer something that you could have in combination with somebody else. Coming up here to Judgment and the Queen of Cups, and I felt as an outcome for this other person, they're not going to let this go. <laughs> they're not going to let this go. I felt that this person would confess their love and devotion to you in a really upfront and honest way that will probably take you by surprise if they haven't done that already. I feel like you're going to see a different side to this person, much more sensitive, much more intuitive, much more gentle nature that really lies at the heart of who it is that they really are. Um, I felt that this person would apologize to you wholeheartedly as to their behavior or to what it is that they've actually done to you through the process of them letting go. I, I, my, my felt was that this person would make very heartfelt promises to you in a way that were about commitment and wanting to have a very devoted, loving relationship that actually built on something that they had identified in terms of their feelings for you. This person loves you. They've grown through this experience in a way where they can see what is it, 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 what is it they've actually lost by not having you in their life. And I felt that they would begin to make it all about you. I wondered whether in, in, in the past, this person has been more about themselves, putting their own needs first. I felt that the way that they had actually broken off with you was very brutal and quite insensitive. And I think there's a side to this person. You can see that here with the emperor. You know, it's incredibly assertive, very strong, very, very bulky. You know, like it's a really pushy energy that kind of like once it's made its mind, it really wants to get what it wants. But then again, on the other side, in the future here, I also see a person who is incredibly tender, very sensitive, romantic, compassionate, loving and sensitive, who understands you and what you need. This person wants to reach in at a level that is all about feeling, love. You know, it's, it's, it's very beautiful stuff, to be honest with you. I think, again, I, I just, I kind of felt this person would show a side of themselves that you hadn't anticipated, maybe that you hadn't seen before, maybe you had an inkling that it was there, but at the same time, you know, here it is. I, I felt that this person was prepared to, to sit and wait. There's a patience that comes through here with the judgment and the Queen of Cups, that this person would wait for as long as you needed to figure yourself out, that they would sit there in the balance waiting, hoping that you would actually make your mind up to have a relationship with them in a way that was committed for the future. Coming down here to the lovers and the Ten of Cups, I felt that the future outcome for you was that you would actually make a choice that was based on your happiness, that you would attune to this idea of love. You can see that here, obviously, with the lovers and with the Ten of, of Cups. It's about the idea of, of, of family. Maybe for some of you, the idea of actually settling down with somebody who you could have kids with, or if it wasn't about kids, maybe a sense of family and belonging by being in a relationship that gave you a unit or, or, or a nucleus that, that, that was based on, on, on a sense of belonging to that person. I felt that you would decide to give this a go. 
There's a, there's a revelation here through the idea of happiness. I think it's a, it's a, it's a big shift from where you're at at the moment, because this is a very self-empowered position that has realized that you don't necessarily need to have somebody else in your life to make you happy. But at the same time, moving into the future, you've also, I think you've come to point, a point where you've realized that actually being in love with somebody who is prepared to commit at this level of tenderness and, 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 and you know, intimacy really is, 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 it's not that it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it's a rare opportunity. Um, and I, I, I kind of feel that you're enamored by a, a, a process of romance, you know, like a romantic flow or an experience that washes over you in a way where it's like, you know what, you know, love is everything. And that you can actually have your own power and still be in a relationship and experience this kind of, of intimacy that you can have the best of both worlds. I feel that you would accept accept their apology and that you would actually end up pairing with this person in a way that was very committed and that you would reciprocate the same love and devotion. And I have to say to you, for me, this is stay. This, this, this whole reading is saying stay. I felt that the assertion of this person's desires, their, 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 their quest to win you over was valid. This person has been through the ringer. I felt that this person had let you go and gone through a process of self-realization that had been very confronting and difficult and that through a lot of soul searching, they've actually come to a point where they realized they really love you. You know, um, you know, it's 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 t it's taken them to do what it is that they do and to f to to do to figure themselves out, and I don't feel that that's been a bad situation for you either because I kind of feel that through this process you've also figured yourself out to find your own power and that you don't have to give that up to be in a relationship with somebody. It's a stay for me. I hope this reading has made some sense to you, and if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon, that'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how does you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much, and take care. Bye. Hi everyone, welcome to card number three. This is your reading and we're looking at whether to stay or whether to go. So let's jump in and have a look and see what's going on here. I'm drawn up here to the moon and the ace of swords. I thought it was a really good place to start with the other person. It's a real sense that they're not really speaking their mind in a way that's clear or concise. Um, there's something that's lying under the surface that you can get a sense of, but at the same time, it's really hard to know for sure because this person is not speaking their mind. Um, it's almost like I feel like this person wants to be out of the relationship, but at the same time, they're hesitant to actually say it or to do anything about it. And it kind of interprets into, uh, I, I guess, a real time play of them giving you a feeling that something something's not quite right, or maybe they're just drop, dropping things into conversation in a very unconscious way that don't that doesn't really sound quite right, you know? Uh, maybe there's hints that they don't want to be hanging around or that they want to be doing something else. And it's a real sort of push-pull energy. One one part of me sort of feels very confident this that this person knows what they want to do, and the other part is saying that they're a bit blurred about that. Um, you know, the moon is a very watery card, you know, it, 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 it has a very soupy context in as much as it can be quite depressive and, and very unclear. And the Ace of Swords is a card that is quite concise and sharp and, and, and wants to cut away and have a new beginning. So on the one hand, I feel this person really doesn't want to be here. Uh, but then on the other hand, this energy from the moon is really watering that down in a way that doesn't seem so clear. My, my feeling here is that this person has very unconscious um, feelings or perhaps um, thoughts that, that kind of swim around. And, 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 and maybe there are times of clarity, but they're very quickly watered down by this kind of moon energy in a way that um, makes it very unclear again. So it's kind of, 
it kind of has moments of of of, of like a spark and and you know a full vision, but then it's quickly overshadowed by this feeling that they're not quite clear or that they they, they, they don't have the confidence to be able to kind of, you know, elaborate and, and put that into more context. So I kind of feel that it's very hard to be around this person at the moment. You know, they're, 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 they're just not in a great place to be able to make a decision as to what is it they really want. And I, I, I felt quite a, a difficult... I, I guess for, for me, I, f I feel like you wouldn't, wouldn't want to be on the end of the sharp end of this person. I, I have a feeling that they can lash out. You can see that here with the Ace of Swords. There's a ten tendency to get angry, a tendency to be very pointed and to make it feel like it's all your problem. So, so, so from that point of view, I feel that they have a tendency to blame other people for their, all of their problems. That they, that they they don't really know how to take on the responsibility for their lack of input into making things work. Um, they can be very divisive in some ways as well. Um, I, I, I really felt that this person, from an emotional point of view, was lacking the maturity to be able to work things out in a way that was... Um, yeah, again, concise or clear. I feel, feel they're quite thwarted on that particular level. Coming down here to death and the Ten of Wands, I felt this was a really good place to start for you. I felt that you were in a position where you were taking it all on. You were trying to make everything right in a way that kept this connection going. I, I feel like you've learned some really bad habits with this person in a way that actually takes the slack for the lack of input. I think there's a tendency for you to jump in at the deep end or to put things together in a way that, um, you know, make it work, essentially. Um, I, I, I think through moments of uncertainty with this person, your, your kind of, your reaction is to, um, to try harder, to push harder, to, um, to take on what they're not putting on in a way that actually supports the relationship to, to succeed. I felt here, especially with death, that you were, maybe you were avoiding looking at what it really meant to leave this person. A part of you is frightened or scared to face the reality of what it means to make a total change without them in your life. You know, death is a very difficult card. It's confronting and it means that you actually have to face the reality of what it means to end everything in a way that's very uncomfortable. And, you know, the Ten of Wands doesn't want to give up. You know, it's a tenacious card that has an enormous amount of energy to put into anything that it actually puts its mind to. And I think that you, you're the kind of person who just doesn't give up on things. I think that you take it on very personally from that point of view, that you want this relationship to succeed in a way that um, you, you feel that you could sing, single-handedly actually make it work. And, and I think that you can see here with the Ace of Swords, I mean, this, this person is not putting in at a practical level. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very passive, aggressive energy. I think that they don't make the effort where it really counts. And if things aren't going their way, they tend to lash out in, 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 in a form that um, certainly makes you feel like it's all your problem. So they're quick to point out everything that's wrong, um, but they're not, they're not actually looking at what's right. I, I, I kind of feel that this is an energy that drags you down and makes you feel like you're, you're sinking a lot of the time. Um, and it's really difficult because they're not really sharing what they really think and feel. Again, very push-pull. And if I come over here to the past, looking at the Emperor and the King of, so King of Wands, sorry, I felt that this person was a really hard-working, ambitious individual who was very goal-orientated. I felt that their career or their work or their projects that um, they were focused on, it, it was everything. This is somebody who is a born leader who wants to climb mountains just because they're there. I kind of feel like they really like a challenge and that they're completely into anything that helps them to move up the ladder in a way that gives them a sense of achievement. Um, there's, there's quite an intimidating energy that comes through from both of these cars, very fiery, very warrior-like energy that can be a little bit overwhelming at times, a bit overbearing. I feel that this person is always pushing their own agenda. 
it's always about their own priorities and that they are a very fiery person who have they have a very bright and, and, and talented disposition. I, I, my, my sense here is that this is somebody who is fully absorbed by their own challenges. Um, you know, everything that they're focused on, everything that they're wanting to do comes number one. Um, my sense here was that it can be very difficult to stand up to this person because you have to you have to really put a lot of energy into doing that. Um, this person pushes back in a very natural way that wants to win. They're, they're very competitive. You know, if you're playing a board game, game with this person, they want to win. So there's an edge there that just makes it a little bit uncomfortable at times because they're playing for keeps. Yeah, they're very pushy. They want to be. They want to be the first over the finish line in a way that actually gives them the goal. Um, and 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 really, I think there's nothing wrong with that in isolation. But my sense here is that if I look down here with the Hermit and the Two of Wands, I felt for you in balance of that particular situation. It's kind of like you're always waiting to catch a moment to to be number one. Really, um, I felt for a very long time. You know, you've been you've been quite patient with this person in terms of supporting them to get to where they want to be, perhaps within their career or whatever it is that they're trying to achieve from a very constructive point of view in terms of their uh, their professional life. I, I, I kind of feel like you're always offering them some sense of perspective that really helps them to be able to kind of climb the mountain, to, to, to reach the goal, to reach the summit that they really want to, to get to. I think that you've, you've got a lot of experience within your own right in terms of your own wisdom and you know your ability to self-reflect and put things into a more holistic point of view i think i think you offer a lot of clarity to this person and, and i think that's actually a very important aspect because this person lacks that in a big way i think there are times where they're just very naturally inclined to um, push themselves to win and again again that's quite that's quite a, a sort of ambitious and tenacious push I, I, I question their ability to strategize effectively in a way that is that is clear. Um, and I think that you actually offer a lot for them to draw from in that context. This person is always coming first, though, and I feel that you're always coming second. And everything revolves around their world in a way where you're just sort of like, you know, you're, you're, you're in waiting. You know, you're in the balance waiting for a moment to open up in their diary or... You're waiting for all of their professional or, 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 you know, other related activities to kind of abate in a way where you actually get a look in so that you can have some time with this person. It's just like it's like you're constantly revolving around their world. You can see that here with the two of, of pentacles. It's a car that's very present. It's a car that has perspective. But at the same time, there's no action happening here. You know, in the Hermit, it's a card of waiting also. It's reflecting a long period of time that reinforces the Two of Pentacles, sorry, the Two of Wands here. Um, I think you're constantly projecting into the future in terms of what you think is possible. But you're held back by the, their agenda because it's all about them so much of the time. And I feel like you've just come to a point here with Death and the Ten of Wands. It's like, you know, you're constantly pushing, 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 trying to keep it all afloat. You're keeping the momentum going. You're taking the slack where this person's not putting in. You're, I think, I think you're incredibly understanding of this person's goals, of, of, of what they're trying to achieve in life, to be, almost to be bigger and better, to leave their mark on life in a way that um, gives them some kind of a success that you're incredibly supportive of. But then again, at the same time, when you really get down into the personal nitty gritty aspect of how they really feel about you, I kind of feel like they just cut you short and they never really go going deeper into their experience of how they really feel. You know, there's, they're thwarted on that level of, of feeling, of understanding at an emotional point of view. It is, there's a lack of maturity here. There's a lack of development. There's, I, I, I would go one step further. I feel that there's actually a fear of actually going in deep at that level to really explore the feeling at an intimate and very close nature. You know, they, 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 they just find it easy to be more defensive, to be more warrior-like, to be more pushy, to kind of fall back into a, a way that makes it all about them. Because when it's all about them, they're very confident. You know, they, um, and when I say when it's all about them, I, I, I mean in terms of achievement, in terms of, of success, because they want to feel good about themselves. They want to explore all avenues that actually give them a sense of achievement. Um, 
but they don't know how to achieve at an emotional level. They don't know how know how to find that fulfillment that actually makes it worthwhile because they shy away from it. There's a, there's a fear there. You know, there's 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 conflict within that zone of of living and being, and it's a it's a very important aspect of any relationship. My sense is is that you actually, when you try to confront this person about what's going on at that particular level, you actually get a full stop. You get pushed back. You get cut down. You get, um, you get a stab. You know, you get a, a a cold, prickly feeling that puts you in your place and makes you fearful to actually stand up to them in a way where you can actually explore what should be a very natural and um, evolutionary aspect of the relationship. Coming over here to the lovers and the king of pentacles, in terms of an outcome, I felt that this person wouldn't back down on that level. You know, there's a feeling here that um, this is a very proud person. You know, there's a lot of ego here in the king of pentacles. It's uh, It has a, a, a very defensive energy, like, like the emperor, like the king of wands. You know, there is um, a sense of being better than everybody else or being above it all in a way that just doesn't keep things natural or, or, or keep things flowing in a way that um, looks at it from a more even keel. And when it comes to the relationship, I think that this person does deep down actually have love for you. I'm not, I'm not saying that they don't. They are very close to you. They are feeling that you are a person that they really want to be with. But at the same time, this relationship supports them and all of their achievements. And I felt that when you actually looked at the aspect of what we're talking about here in terms of getting close to them on an emotional level, you have somebody who can't see a problem. They don't feel that there's any basis for a conversation or a debate to actually explore what it really means to get intimate and close at a level that perhaps you're wanting to, yeah? It's a greedy position. This person feels that they do more. They feel that they contribute more. They feel that they also want more out of the relationship in a way that is very one way. Yeah. There's there's an an, an ego and immaturity here that um, presses down emotional capacity. It doesn't allow it to thrive. It doesn't allow it to grow in a way that is vulnerable. Okay. And you can see that here with the moon and the Ace of Swords. The moon is the vulnerability in this reading. It's the uncon unconscious experience of feeling that something's not quite right and that you have to block it out with the sword. You know, that's a very defensive energy that actually cuts out that piece of the picture in a way that um, allows you to survive so that you don't have to actually go into a place or an area that actually makes you feel uncomfortable. And I felt here that this person would not back down in a way where they gave you a chance to make it even, yeah? Coming down here to the devil and the ten of swords, I felt there was an outcome for you in terms of this particular connection that you'd end up feeling really trapped by this. There's a sense that you've been played, that you've been manip manipulated into an untenable position. You can see that here with the devil. It's an uncomfortable relationship that doesn't allow you to get close in a way where you feel that you have the int intimacy that you really want. Yeah, there's an element of control here that gives you an outcome here with the Ten of Swords that feels like you're let down, betrayed, that you're played in a way where you have nowhere, le nowhere left to turn. It's a manip manipulated situation that makes you feel like it's all your fault as well. This is, this is, this is, this is, this, this energy is a feeling where you've had your power taken away from you. And at the same time, there's a sense that this is the end of the line, that there's nowhere left to turn for you. You know, it's, it's a very final position of wanting out, wanting something above and, above and beyond this particular experience. I felt that you would get to a place where you would actually give up on this person, that you would have a hatred of this situation that you would feel that you would feel that this has got, gotten under your skin in a way that it eats you up and that it becomes so overly negative that it's just not something that you want to experience anymore um i felt ultimately it was a sense that you'd felt demeaned by this person you can see that here with the king of pentacles the king of wands to some degree but certainly the, the emperor it's a very overbearing 
energy that just doesn't come down to the reality of what's going on. You're so, you, you, you're, and you're, you're, you're constantly having to push up against something that wants to be on top of you in a way that um, doesn't want to be wrong and that doesn't want to lose because this person feels that they have too much to lose. And ultimately, all they have to lose is a sense of feeling vulnerable to a situation where they can open up and actually tell you how does it they really feel and what their shortfallings are. And this person doesn't want to face that. They don't want to face what's wrong for them, what they're not doing right. I felt that this was a situation where you should leave. This is not a situation where you should stay. And I feel as a natural timeline and a consequence of this person's actions and behaviors that you would get to a point where you would actually leave anyway. So I hope this reading has made some sense to you. And if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe. Tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're inter interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how does you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much and take care.